Teams of peer-to-peer -peer support is a key success factor for SAI capacity development. On Wednesday, we will widen the circle to the Arabosai General Secretariat when they put us in the picture with regards to the region's professionalization journey. Thereafter, we will reflect on the quality assurance systems within Intosai and its regions, an aspect that the CBC has not attended to before. But this opening session of today, colleagues, which also continues after the tea break, is particularly aimed at inspiring and encouraging one another as we prepare to tackle the ambitious agenda of the next three days, but also to inspire and encourage one another to continue to pursue the long-term goals of Intosai, but also global development goals such as the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations, <clears throat> and in particular, Sustainable Development Goal number 16, around which we're going to look at supporting the development of supreme audit institutions so that all size can become model institutions that lead by example and add value. This resonates with our own international standard on Supreme Audit Institutions 12, which was developed after we did extensive work on the value and benefits of Supreme Audit Institutions. In this context, institutions that lead by example in respect of our governance, accountability and transparency and above all, our effectiveness. This will not only empower us, but also provide the credibility that will continue to be the currency with which we will support our governments and their agencies as we share our insights and professional perspectives, thereby increasing society's trust in public institutions. We will also try in the context of this Agenda 2030, focus on Sustainable Development Goal number 17, and the target of enhancing support for the implementation of effective and targeted capacity building in developing and developed countries in support of the implementation of all the sustainable goals. In the process of making sure we enhance existing modalities such as North-South cooperation, but also encourage and enhance South-to-South -south and triangular arrangements wherever this is possible. We simply have to find ways to inspire and encourage one another, and in some cases find new approaches so that we are able to overcome the barriers and many challenges we face as size and as intersai. The recent global size stock taking report has highlighted numerous areas in which Supreme Audit Institutions are still struggling to fully execute their mandates. In some instances, this is owing to external pressures. Globally, for example, only 52% of legislatures hold public hearings on outcomes of work done by audit institutions and also some supreme audit institutions continue to face independence challenges, especially the area of financial independence. And we hear when looking at this size stock taking report 
that what largely weighs on this area of financial independence is instances where there is executive interference. But in many cases, size themselves should do more about their internal processes and capacities. Many Supreme Audit institutions still have a long way to go with regard to proper strategic planning, their audit quality, and reporting on their own performance. These are just a few of those that surfaced prominently in the stock taking report. This same report, colleagues, also points out that poorer countries are further behind, with the group of least developed countries being significantly behind in many areas. But there are also some encouraging news that are revealed in this stock taking report. That overall SI performance in respect of the audit and accountability cycle has increased in terms of a composite measure of aspects of both side performance and the response of the executive to audit reports. And there is more that we should be encouraged about. We know that we have the support of the many important stakeholders. For example, the United Nations who has issued two resolutions that support the independence and important role of size in the achievement of national development objectives and priorities, as well as global development goals. The UN resolution also expressly encouraged member states and relevant UN institutions to continue to intensify their cooperation including in capacity building cooperation with INTOSAI and its members. Another important stakeholder that we have been journeying on over a number of years are the 23 members of the donor community who have joined INTOSAI in a commitment to supporting the improvement of SAI performance in developing countries through scaled up and more effective support. We are looking forward to the annual meeting of the InterSci Donor Steering Committee taking place on Thursday in this same convention center. Other partners and supporting stakeholders include the Interparliamentary Union, the International Federation of Accountants, the Institute of Internal Auditors and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Although we are in support, the governing board's task force being led by the General Secretariat, who is also looking into the adequacy of Indosai's current cooperation agreement with, his, with these stakeholders. We look forward to the governing board's reflection on this matter at its next gathering before the end of this year. But I have more good news, colleagues. We have an expert with us today who is guaranteed to stimulate and inform our thinking and deliberations on these and other matters. <clears throat> In putting together the program for the next couple of days, we are honored to be joined by a guest speaker for this opening session in the name of Mr. Jens Wandel, who will help us become inspired and encouraged. Welcome, Jens. Just as a brief background to Jens, he is a former UN Assistant Secretary General with extensive experience in capacity building, among others and spent many years at the United Nations Development Program and was last month tasked by the current UN Secretary General to provide specialist advice on a number of reforms at the United Nations. 
Congratulations on this task, Jens. So we approached Jens a few months ago to join us as a guest speaker, not because of this impressive resume, but because of his ability to supplement his extensive experience with the ability to engage directly with audiences on matters of capacity building, taking this from a theoretical to a very practical and stimulating engagement. We are therefore looking forward to picking up some of these insights with Yen soon after the tea break. And the last good news, but certainly not the least, is that in this room we have close to 100 individuals with rich and varied capacity building knowledge and experiences who can make this meeting a success provided we can rely on each other's participation. We have set aside ample time this afternoon for you to engage with the guest speaker so that we can set the tone for the next three days of identifying the issues that matter, the barriers that need to be overcome, and ways in which we can overcome these barriers. During all the sessions in the next few days, there will also be lots of time to engage in smaller and bigger groups so that we can maximize and benefit from the experience in this room. So that we can fully exploit the exchange of ideas and experience and jointly find solutions in the spirit of it can be done. The circle can only be widened with the help of everyone present. So as we proceed to the tea break, you may want to use the break to discuss among yourselves some of the capacity building issues about which you would want some encouragement and advice and start engaging about that from this afternoon until Wednesday afternoon when we wrap up. On my part, I greatly look forward to our engagement over the next three days. As the CBC, and joined by the other InterSci Gold Chairs, we will be listening very carefully to what else or what more can be done to support InterSci mission and its journey to 2022. We also trust that key stakeholders, such as the regional and sub-regional organizations, the InterSight Development Initiative, IDI, and our donor partners will do the same so that by Wednesday, we all live with more insight and new commitment to make a difference in enhancing capacity building. In this context, colleagues, I would like to thank you for paying attention to these few comments. And before I hand over to the Secretariat to give us the next matching orders, I would like to invite anyone in the audience who already is inspired to raise a comment or two. Thank you very much. Jan.
Anybody with a comment at this point? Has said in his speech, remember our theme of today, the inspiring, encouraging one another. Um, and he hinted at the fact that we're going to do this in two ways. There's going to be the opportunity for networking, um, whether it's over tea or cocktail or even in the evenings when we've, we've got a bit of free time. Um, there's also the session that we're going to have after tea. Um, so the idea, according to your programs, is that we take a break now, that we use the, the half an hour odd that's allowed for that tea break to start engaging, meet each other, and talk about our experiences, and that we try and be back here around about um, 10 to 3. Let's make the most of, of, of this opportunity. You know, in working over the last year or two with the task force on inter-site professionalization, we've realized that by telling stories, by sharing, and by opening up about what we face, we really start surfacing those commonalities, those things that make us strong. So for us in that task force, it's trying to work our way towards pronouncements, where we started off thinking that we're doing very different things. We realized that we've got a core that binds us together, and we realized that only by telling stories, by engaging, by talking. So let's make the most of, of the network opportunity now over tea. Like I said, we're going to allow for about an half an hour, try and be back here at about 10 to 3, after which we're going to have an engagement with Jens. Enjoy the break.